In section 10.3, we're going to look at the gas laws. Um, so the first one we'll look at is Boyle's law. And Boyle, Boyle was looking at um, how volume and pressure were related. Um, and so he had this kind of this apparatus kind of set up in his house. It's this J-shaped tube here, um, and he filled the, filled the tube to a little bit with uh, gas, and then he put some mercury in over here. And, and measured, you know, he measured the volume, and he knew how much mercury was in there, so he measured the pressure. Um, and then what he does, he like doubled the amount of mercury that he added, and then he looked at how that changed the uh, the, the volume of the gas. So by doubling that the, that mercury, that's like doubling the pressure. And it turns out that the volume was kind of cut in half. Uh, and so you know, you, you can plot you know his results, and you get something that looks like volume versus one over pressure. You get a straight line, which means volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So if you increase one, you have to decrease the other. Um, so you can, you can come up with this equation. So yeah, here we go. So volume is K um, times 1 over P, where K is just a constant. So if you just rearrange this equation, you get pressure times volume is equal to a constant. Well, if that works for one set of pressure uh, and volume, then it has to work for another set of pressure and volume. So because this is a constant. So you basically get this equation P1V1 equals P2V2. So if you if you know um, you know a pressure and a volume and another pressure, you can calculate what the volume is going to be, the second volume. Um, or if you have um, pressure and volume and volume, you can figure out what the other pressure is going to be. Any way you want, there you have you know four four um, variables. I'm going to give you three. You have to find the other one. And you don't really ever have to calculate this constant. You just have to know that because because this equals a constant, P1V1 has to equal P2V2. And um, that means they're inversely proportional. So if you increase pressure, you decrease volume, or, or vice versa. Um, Charles' law. Charles was looking at uh, volume and temperature. And so if you, and this picture is just showing, you know, if you started here with a with a balloon and you increase the temperature, then the balloon would expand. So um, so why does that happen? The, you know, when you give the the molecules more energy, they're going they're going to have more energy. They're moving around a lot. They're going to want to expand, and um, and the balloon's going to expand. So the volume increases. So when you increase the temperature, you increase the volume. If you took that volume and you know, cooled it down, if you took that, that balloon and cooled it down a bit, put it in some ice water, it's going to um, it, it's going to get smaller. The volume would decrease. So decreasing temperature decreases the volume. And you can plot this too. Um, volume versus temperature, and you get a straight line. Um, and you're, you're, what's interesting is you're going to cross the zero volume point right at negative 273 Kelvin, which is or 273 negative 273 Celsius, which is zero Kelvin. Uh, so uh, Lord Kelvin, um, you know, looked at this and, and said, okay, you'd have zero volume. Well, you're never really going to get down um, and that far. Other other things will prevent you from getting a gas at that particular temperature. I'll talk about that later. But to look at more of this work here, you have volume um, equals temperature times some constant. If you rearrange this, so just divide by T, you get volume over temperature equals a constant. So um, if that works for one set of volume and, and temperature, it has to work for another. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And so that's Charles' law. And if you took Chem 107 here, um, you, you probably did this lab where you where you, you prove whether or not this is true. So you, 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 do, um, you measure the volume of gas when it's cold at you know say you know that temperature and then you you measure the volume when it's hot and, and you know that temperature and you figure out that that ratio is uh, it's always true you always get a constant so volume over temperature equals volume over temperature so if you increase the temperature you have to increase the volume as well and uh, the final law here is Avogadro's law Avogadro was looking at um, how volume is related to the number of moles of gas and so he found that if you you know you filled I don't know, maybe these these are balloons. If you fill the balloon to uh, 22.4 liters with helium, and then 22.4 liters with nitrogen, and 22.4 liters with uh, methane, that they all had the same number of particles. So they all had, you know, that's, that's one mole. So they all had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. They weighed a different amount. So if you look at the, the you know, the mass here, helium's going to be pretty light. It's 4 grams. Nitrogen's going to be a little bit more. It's 28 grams, and methane's kind of in, in between. 16 grams, but the volume is the same. You know, so they have the same size balloons. They weigh a different amount. But they all have the same number of of particles in there, um, and that's what Avogadro uh, um, found. Actually, somebody else was doing this work by name Guy Lussac, and then Avogadro interpreted his results. Um, and so, uh, volume and the number of moles are 
directly proportional. So if you increase the number of moles of your particle, you're going to keep you're going to increase the volume. That's assuming that you're keeping temperature and pressure constant. Uh, I mean, if you change those, then everything changes. But if you just if you're just changing the number of moles, then you're um, you can if you increase the number of moles, you'll increase the volume as well. And so those three um, laws, you can put them all together to form the ideal gas equation. Uh, so that's what we have here. So the ideal gas equation, you know, we said volume is um, inversely proportional to pressure. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. Volume is directly proportional to the number of moles of, uh, of gas that you have. And so if you put all these things together, um, you, you end up with the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, where R is a constant, and that's what helps you get rid of all these uh, proportionality signs. So you just make this constant R. Um, and the R that we're going to use is the 0.082, really 0.0821. Uh, we can round this up, this 6, we can round this up a little bit, 0.0821. And your units are liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin, which means uh, whenever we're going to use this R, we want to make sure that our volumes in liters, our pressure is in atmospheres, we have moles, and then our temperature is going to be in Kelvin. So we're going to have to review how to get everything in the right units. So whenever you use, use this equation, 0.0821, if you just want to round that up to 1, that's fine. Um, we'll, in, later on when we talk about energy, we'll look at this R, um, the 8.314, that's in joules, and it's the same R. All you're doing is converting your liter atmospheres to joule, or liter atmospheres to calorie, or whatever you're doing there. But it's the same, it's the same value, uh, just with different units. So 